Welcome to DIY Guitar Making at Eric Schaefer Guitars. In this newer sub-series here, I'm going to lay out some rules for having a successful guitar repair business. If you don't like the word rules, that's fine. You can use the word guidelines instead. I like the word rules. It's just easier for me to say. I make most of my income today from teaching Luthery through my live guitar building workshops and through my online courses but I still make some portion of my income through guitar repair. And actually that percentage used to be much, much higher in the early days of me getting into this. So I do think my experience here will be relevant to anyone, including full-time repair techs. But I'd love to hear what your experience has been in the comments so that this can be more like an open dialogue on the experiences of many in the guitar repair business. So anyway, without further ado, let's get started. This may seem somewhat counterintuitive at first, but the first rule is always under promise and over deliver. This mostly applies to quoting costs, but it can also apply to your workmanship as well. There's a broader principle at work there, but for now let's just look at it narrowly as just quoting costs. Let's say you're quoting a repair to a customer and you're estimating that the repair is going to take you between five and eight hours. So five hours if everything goes as planned and on the high end, eight hours if you reach a snag in the process. And let's say you intend to pay yourself $35 an hour. So your range at that rate is $175 to $280. Now in one scenario, let's say that you quote that job at five hours, so $175. Because it's a pretty cut and dry job and you think it's unlikely that you'll uncover new issues and you don't want to lose the customer by quoting too high, right? Well, in many cases, you'll be right and that repair will actually take five hours and you'll charge the customer exactly what the customer expected to be charged. And so that customer will be a happy customer, um, although they might not be an ecstatic happy customer. However, occasionally you will hit a snag and you'll have to charge the customer more than you originally quoted. You will have over promised and under delivered in that case. At best, the customer will understand that these things happen but they're still gonna be a little bit disappointed. At worst, they'll actually be upset. Now, you might say, well, I'll just eat the cost. And maybe you should, but that's not good either because it's not sustainable as a habit. If you're the people pleaser type, then you'll repeatedly overpromise to customers because it feels good to overpromise. And then when things don't add up, you'll just eat the cost yourself. And meanwhile, you're getting a reputation as the cheap guy or girl, which will filter in the wrong type of customers for you, ones who uh, like you for the bargain prices and not for the quality of your work. So you don't want to overpromise and eat the cost because that screws you, and you don't want to overpromise and underdeliver to the customer because that creates a negative customer experience. In both cases, the problem is overpromising. You should err on the side of under-promising because this creates the necessary buffer so that you can over-deliver later. Just as a point of clarification, when I say a snag in the process, I don't mean a snag due to your own incompetence, but a snag um, just as a regular result of getting deeper into a repair where you uncover things that weren't apparent from an initial quick diagnosis. Because a snag due to incompetence or just your lack of experience because you're new, uh, that is something that you should eat the cost of. So let's look at another scenario where you quote pessimistically at the high end, so eight hours instead of five hours. So $280 instead of $175 which is almost $100 more on your quote. If the customer agrees, then that's great. That means that that customer is serious about their instrument and that they're willing to make the necessary investment to maintain or improve that instrument. This filters in the type of customer that you want to have a relationship with. 
Now you might think that this also filters in ill-informed or naive customers with very deep pockets, and it would, but I actually don't want that type of customer and I would filter them out before I got to this point anyway. I'll explain why you don't want those customers in a different rule. So now with a customer that is willing to pay the high end of the quote, I can perform the work to the highest level of my ability without the temptation of trying to cut corners to save myself time or cost. Now you may have a customer who actually wants you to cut certain corners in order to save them money. Um, that's something I usually don't do, but there are certainly exceptions to that. Uh, and that's something I'm going to talk about in a separate rule. But let's just assume that this customer wants the best of what I can offer and they're willing to pay for it. Now, when that customer gets the bill, and remember they were quoted at 280, it will be somewhere between 175 and 280, and most likely very close to 175. I have actually never charged someone more than their quoted price. In fact, most of the time I'm charging way less than the quoted price. So in the end, this customer gets my best work and they pay less than they expected. They're totally ecstatic and it's a win-win too because I didn't undercut myself in the process. Now you may be tempted to charge the customer the full amount just because they agreed to it, but don't do that. An ecstatic customer is way more valuable um, than that small amount of money that you would get because an ecstatic customer is a return customer and they're also a return customer who likely has friends who could be future customers as well. Not to mention it's just good for its own sake to um, live with integrity so just stick with whatever the hourly rate that you've determined for yourself is and don't arbitrarily change it uh, just because a, a customer is rich or gullible or you know that somebody else is paying for it. Your hourly rate should be appropriately high anyway, so you shouldn't be tempted to fudge with the, the prices like that. It's just not good. It's not honest. So anyway, if you haven't been doing this in your guitar repair business, give it a try. What's the worst that can happen? Your higher quotes might scare away some customers, but those customers are probably not the right customers for you anyway. And don't worry about them. It's not like they're not going to be able to find a place to get a cheap setup. There's plenty of places where they can get that, like a guitar center or some something like that. But what will happen is you'll filter in people who care about and recognize quality work. And if you could have only customers like that, you really don't need that many. So your business can thrive off of uh, just a well, a smaller number of customers. So the rule for today is always under promise and over deliver. Thanks for listening. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your experience has been, if you've been under promising or over promising and what uh, the results of that has been. Uh, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. In the next rule, we're going to talk about specialization and why that's important for a guitar repair business. So stay tuned, and I will talk to you guys in the next episode. Bye. If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video every Friday. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.